Hello, everyone. This is Leonard de Guzman here with Emily Robinson on the Life After D podcast. We're here on March 16th, 2021. Springtime here, uh, some spring allergies, I hope. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I, I got them all day. I got them all day. Uh, I have them too. So um, we're here. Um, you know, it's like, uh, I think we're, we're gonna, if you look at the um, the calendar we're here if we cut it into like quarters um, coming up we, we had daylight savings um, it's killing me today because just throws everything off not sleeping waking up losing an hour so me too so uh yeah it's like um, I hear more and more about uh sleep divorces <laughs> so if you hear about this where people just sleep in different beds I have. Yeah. I think it's pretty, um, it's like a, like a way to actually help the marriage because you don't drive each other nuts at night. Um, I know people who sleep in different rooms, but their marriage is fine. Yeah. I, uh, I, I kind of, I do that some nights, uh, especially during allergy season, I get the nose strips. So I'm going to, they haven't come yet. They're in the mail. So Maybe it works. It's <laughs> oh, a good idea. See if those. So, um, yeah, let's get into the part of the show where we go over the news of the day. Always some fun celebrity gossip. Uh, always some fun stuff coming up um, online. Uh, go on Google and we see what's going on. So let's <laughs> get to it. Of course, uh, the first, <laughs> the first click uh it goes to kim kardashian um with this saga so let's see uh so uh, according to uh cinema cinema blend.com i haven't seen this website but uh the awkward way kanye west and kim kardashian are co-parenting a missed divorce divorce is a rocky no matter the status of people for mega celebrities like kim kardashian and kanye west though there's the added pressure of public scrutiny that complicates proceedings. Now, following the confirmation of the divorce, early reports reveal the awkward way West and Kardashian are co-parenting their four children amidst the scrutiny. Uh, Kanye West opted to cut himself off from Kim Kardashian entirely before she filed for divorce last month, according to the source for page six. Supposedly, West is shutting out Kardashian in other ways, too, the source has stated. Even before Kim files for divorce, Kanye changes numbers and said, you can contact me through my security. Kanye West perceived uh, shut out of Kim Kardashian during their divorce is indeed an awkward way to co-parent instead of their four children, North, Saint, Psalm. Uh, Chicago seeing their parents sh show a united front, West and Kardashian allegedly avoiding being the same room or space even with each other. Uh, the source had even said that West and Kardashian are poorly jumping through different kinds of hoops to ensure there's no contact between them saying, so uh, I guess she leaves the house and he arrives and hangs out with the kids. They have an army of nannies, so the transition is easy. Uh, is this, does this happen with like ordinary people? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do this nesting kind of thing where you don't want to make the kids leave the house. So the, um, the parents take turns at the house and that way the kids don't have to be the ones to go back and forth. And with like with them, they have all the nannies and the nannies can stay. It's probably just so much easier. And then, so when it's not your turn to parent, you go somewhere else or stay somewhere else till it's your turn again. And, um, it works really well for a lot of people. Okay, so here's another uh, thing. I don't know what you watched the Oprah interview with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. I didn't get to watch it, but I heard a lot about it. Okay, so eh, this isn't really, I don't know, we'll see. Let's see how we can break this down. Um, so Meghan Markle, Prince Harry um, could be headed for divorce. Duchess of Sussex, strange half-sister predicts. Of course you would say this like to get onto the news. So Fox News, it looks like uh, uh, they went for the bait. Um, yeah, let's just, let's explore it. Okay. So um, 
Okay, Meghan Markle is strange half sister. Samantha doesn't have much faith in the marriage between the Duchess of Sussex and Prince Harry. Yes, Samantha had been vocal about her half sister in recent years, recently speaking out and providing evidence against claims of vast estrangement between the two, which Markle made during the former American actress sit down with the interview with Oprah Winfrey. Uh, now Samantha, 56, has weighed in on the royal marriage. I see it ending in divorce unless they get extensive counseling and can agree to work on being honest, to work on apologies, everyone, that they've damaged in the course of this bull in a china shop to your spiral or spiel. Samantha told TMZ, uh, nothing about any of this has been honest. Um, so I know it's probably, it's like a prediction. It's like we made a Super Bowl prediction. Um, so when family kind of like gets, like does, you know, she's probably not, it's this year she hasn't talked to her sister since 2008. Does this, how does it influence like a marriage? I mean, family can be a humongous influence and factor on a marriage. Um, a lot of people listen to their family's advice and if their family doesn't like their spouse, that causes a lot of problems. A lot of people end up in the position where they feel like they have to choose their wife over their mom, their mom over their wife, or, you know, their husband over their parents, or, you know, their husband, or their parents over their husband, you know, it's, it's a tough situation. Um, I've seen it go all the different directions, somebody choosing their spouse, somebody choosing their parents, um, choosing their, their sister, their brother, their family, uh, you know, it's a hard position to be in and people really shouldn't put their family in that position. If there's any way around it to avoid it, where your family doesn't feel like they have to choose between family members, um, it's, it's better because obviously it causes a lot of strife and, and turmoil. I mean, it's hard because Harry and Meghan have to choose between the crown and the life that they want. Um, it's hard if, if the married people are on the same page and can be a united friends, I think it's a lot easier if they aren't agreeing or they're having trouble being on the same page, it's definitely harder. So, um, family interference in marriage, I think is very common and is a big reason for marriage is not working. Okay. So let's, all the celebrity news we're going to go through today. <laughs> uh, but um, so let's move on to this um, uh, Kiplinger.com. I, I have to um, say, though, I hope they stay together. I really like uh, watching oil family stuff. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they're going to have uh, some Oprah shows on or on the Oprah network or, or something. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, are they getting their own show? I think Harry, uh, Prince Harry is some deal with Spotify and then um, probably Meghan Markle got something. I used to watch that show, Suits, before she became, uh, she, she like a, a duchess, before she became a duchess. Right. Okay. So I, I'm not familiar with this stuff. But <laughs> I used to watch a show, yeah, before she got, uh, she, before she came, became royalty. So I'm, I'm familiar with and she was before. just famous, but she wasn't royalty yet. <laughs> yeah, and then she did No Deal, Deal or No Deal, and she, you know, held the suitcases too. So, came up. She came up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let's get to this one. Um, so, four ways to keep uh, employees divorced from hurting your business's bottom line. When one of your workers goes through a divorce, like it or not, your company can get pulled into the fray. It's in your best interest as well as theirs to help streamline the process. Uh, though divorce is typically seen as a personal matter, it can also become a personnel matter. If you have an employee going through divorce, it's not only disruptive and difficult for their private life, but may also create headaches for your business. The employee may be experiencing stress, financial burdens, and time obligations such as court appearances. Their spouse may contact the company and ask for information that may seem questionable, intrusive, or time-consuming. The potential problems are magnified when the 
employee is a C-suite executive owner or someone in another high-level position with a complex compensation package. But a divorce can also be very draining on a small business where employees tend to wear many hats and have little bandwidth for unexpected requests. Um, so here's four things a business can do to streamline employees' divorce. And I'm sure with COVID, it's just mad, it's just it's just a lot of this stuff's happening. Um, so number one, know your employees' rights in a divorce, and most importantly, know their spouse's right to information. And number two, uh, be organized. Uh, organize your compensation incentive program. Documentation around individual employees. Make a an employee-centered file of all those documents. Um, software can help too. So uh, number three, uh, give your employees access to their own compensation information. Number four, move fast. If legally required documentation is not produced up front and in an organized manner, that may mean adding to the hourly bill from accounts or corporate counsel. And what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, that's all true. A divorce can be really stressful for a company. Um, their employees' attention's divided. The employee may need a lot of dates off for court. The employee may need, you know, time to get things together for the divorce. The employee may end up with child care issues. Um, there's a lot that can really affect your job. So uh, I think the best thing an employer can do is be as supportive as possible. Obviously, they have a business to run and they need, you know, their employee to be present to be able to do that. But I think the more supportive they can be of the employee's situation, the more loyalty and hard work they will get out from that employee. You know, we're all humans at the end of the day. We all go through hard things in our lives. And I think that, um, companies need to be respectful of that, even if it means having to maybe hire a temp person for a little bit or give a pay cut to the employee. Um, there should be some, some type of um, way to deal with when an employee has a personal issue like that. Next article, um, I think this is like Rush Limbaugh's <laughs> station. It's like a uh, wibx950.com but it's interesting because you like dogs and it is interesting because who gets a dog um so uh who do you think gets the dog in a divorce uh the pandemic uh, the pandemic has taken a huge toll on several marriages and divorce rates are on the rise several issues get argued when two people are going through divorce but an interesting question is who gets a dog for many couples dogs or other animals like children. I like children and a beloved member of family. Unfortunately, the laws of the state of New York do not look at animals in that way. Yeah, I assume this is a New York um, article or a news paper. Uh, dogs and other pets are looked at as property here in New York State. And when it comes to divorce, the determination of the final home for the animal is made the same way judges look at furniture or a vehicle. Um, according to the website survivedivorce.com, New York State is an equitable division state and other states known as community property states, property or possessions are split equally between the two parties. Um, so they say that they also have the right to manage any property that that is in their name alone. While this will carry some weight in divorce, it is not the only factor that determines an equitable division of assets. So how does this all work out? It's state by state, obviously. So yeah. California, that's your expertise. Yeah. So it's state by state. In California, it used to be that pets were just considered property to be divided in the divorce. Now they actually do give some consideration for who is able to take care of the pet, pay for the pet, um, you know, who's more bonded to the pet, the, there's a new law that allows them to consider that in the division of the property. So while the pets are still considered personal property, um, it's it's a lot more detailed now than just saying, um, you know, you get the computer and you get the dog because they would sell for the same amount. It's that used to be how it was. Now there's a lot more thought that goes into it. There can also even be like joint ownership types of orders where two people 
you know, jointly own the pet on a schedule, like a custody type of schedule. So I, I'm really happy about that because now in California, you can actually take into consideration the pet as more than just a piece of property. That's good. So maybe if you have multiple dogs and it won't be as bad or, or get a new dog. Maybe, uh, but if you really love your dog, like it's your baby, it may yeah. not be that simple. Get a new baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get to the show um, we call Dear Emily, where we go over posts online, um, people going through um, the divorce process, whether they're getting started, whether it's alimony, um, child support, uh, how to um, divvy up uh, a bonus at work, things like this come up. Um, so let's see our first one. Um, this one is a, is a getting started one. How did you announce your divorce? I know everyone is going to have a different level of comfort when proclaiming their status as a divorcee, but I'm interested to in know how people go about it. Um, what's the classiest way you've seen it done? Um, what's the trashiest way? How are, how are you gonna tell folks? Um, are you gonna tell them? Group text the family, maybe a few well-placed phone calls, <laughs> a full page color in the local paper, Facebook, question mark. Obviously, it's a very personal decision. I've seen, you know, giant Facebook announcements, people having divorce parties, um, people, you know, putting it all over their social media, uh, things like that. Um, those may not be the classiest way. <laughs> they, but they all, I've also seen, you know, it very discreet where you don't really tell anyone until it comes up. Um, maybe people only know because suddenly you're Ms. not Mrs. or your last name suddenly changes, but there's a, a, a whole range of ways you can tell people. And I think it really depends on the person and what, you know, their family style, what they think is appropriate. Okay, that's good. I mean, I don't know, I guess a tweet, would be kind of awkward <laughs> like i don't know i mean but that's how people break news now i don't know so it is it's, it's uh group text depends at least, i mean if you tweet it out i think everyone would know it's like off your chest and it's like i don't know it's like it's true but does everybody really need to know i mean your close friends and your family maybe but does everyone in your life need to know that's well, I mean, it speeds up the dating. Like if you're looking to like, just move on and oh, okay. Like so-and-so single. Okay. Let's just give them a year or, or, or a month or I don't know, a couple of weeks. I don't, well, that is true. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's get to this next one. It's a getting started one. Um, uh, so this one, uh, moving out of the, marital home, uh, legal advice needed. Um, I currently own a home with my husband. I will be filing for divorce, but right now I just need to get out of this toxic environment. Will I lose any of my ownership right to the house when we go sell it? If, if I move out, we have about 180K of equity in the house. I live in Florida, if that matters, any feedback is greatly appreciated. Yeah, that's a good question. I get asked that a lot, actually. Um, I don't know in Florida, but in California, no. There's there's no um, abandonment of the property in that sense. If it's a community asset and you move out while the divorce is pending before everything's divided, you're not going to be considered to have abandoned the property. Um, it's, you know, really uncomfortable to stay living together for many people. And so that uh, the court understands that that's something that typically happens. Okay, this is the last post of the day. Um, looks interesting. Um, so this one is, yeah, getting started to uh, uh, pro protect assets before getting married. Um, this may sound like a weird question, but I'm getting an arranged marriage with someone in India. 
Um, but I'm okay with it because our parents know each other. Uh, from where I am from, arranged marriages are fairly common and they end up working out well. Uh, my question is, is there anything I can do to protect my assets in case there's a small chance we get a divorce? Um, I've worked really hard so far and do have some nice assets that I would not like to lose. We aren't getting a prenup. However, I've read that if I store my assets in an individual account and do not commingle it after the marriage, that it's safe. Um, what else should I do to make it as safe as possible in case the worst possibility comes up? Well, that's a really complicated question. In California, the best way to do that would be a prenup. But if you're not doing a prenup, um, anything acquired before marriage is separate property. So yes, keeping it clearly separate would really help. But once you get married, your spouse can still acquire things um, in various ways. Like if you have a separate property house or a business or retirement accounts that you're still contributing to, still paying the mortgage on, still working in the business, your spouse may acquire an interest in those. There's no way to keep that truly separate because your income and your time and effort invested in um, the, the business, for example, is a community asset. So unless it's like a pure just financial account that you're not going to touch or in, add any money to. It's not a um, equity asset like a house that you're going to pay a mortgage down on. Um, you know, if, if that's the case, it may be more simple and you can just keep it separate. But otherwise, um, you definitely need to get a lawyer's advice because without a prenup, it would be very hard. Or you could like dig it up in the forest, like get the... <laughs> like the corn the coronets and just like get a a treasure chest and <laughs> dig it in the ground. <laughs> I don't know. There you go. That works too. Okay, so that's all the time we have for today. Um any last thing anything like I saw this thing on Zoom where it got crazy because um there there was a witness and the it was like a it was like a like a court zoom thing and it got weird because like the uh, the witness and the defendant were in the same like like room and and like it just got weird. So I guess wow. things like that because uh, because the judge felt or the attorney felt that it was threatening uh, the defendant somehow. It's it's kind of hard to unpack. We don't have a lot of time, but does this stuff is this like more common where people are just like oh um, this is like the dynamics change completely. Right. I mean, I'm not sure the situations are more common. Like we probably always have had these, you know, situations where people have felt like this. Although maybe, you know, I, I think more what it is, is it's just now more frequently recorded because it's on Zoom. So we're seeing it more. Like we've always had crazy things happen in court or depositions or things like that. But because it's all recorded now, um, yeah. It's, I think it's just that we're, and then it, now it's all going viral, I think is why we're seeing more of it. I'm not sure it's actually happening more. Yeah, I just, I just like the entertainment factor in it. And I, I, I don't, oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So tune in for <laughs> It provides more. a lot of entertainment. <laughs> tune in uh, next week for more viral craziness. <laughs> You're on the Live After D podcast. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye.